I'm pumped to get this box open. Holy cow. This is a sponsored video. My good friends over at Jensen USA made this video possible. And I've got a link to the bike we talk about in the description below. Anything at all you purchase from Jensen will help out my channel. It's a big component of how I get to do these videos. Let's keep this going. When you're doing your online shopping, consider hitting up Jensen, grab that link below, then anything at all you purchase over there will help out my channel. I ride my Ibis bikes in about half my online content and Ibis sponsors three standalone videos on my channel in 2020. Beyond that, I'm also supported by my friends at PNW Components, Industry 9, Kitsbo Cycling Apparel, Cali Protectives, and Shimano. That's it. That wasn't hard, was it? Let's get into the super fun part. Woo! That's how we start our rides around here. If you're new here, my name's Jeff. I've been riding mountain bikes, oh gosh, way too long. I raced downhill and then enduro professionally for quite a long time. Today, I'm no longer a professional rider per se, but I've been making YouTube videos. Thank you all for your support. Let's check out what's inside this giant box. Oh. Ah yes, today we have a bike from our friends over at Niner. So Niner started in 2004 when a fellow named Chris down in Southern California had a window tinting business, but discovered he loved the joy as a single track more than deciding what color tints to put on home skillet's window. At the time, there was only, I think, seven brands making 29ers. Chris really enjoyed the feel of a 29-inch wheel, and he thought it might be a thing. In hindsight, that was a pretty smart move. Chris started a hobby business making bikes. It was called Niner, and after a short while, he ended up selling the window tinting business and putting all of his efforts into the little brand called Niner. So as the name implies, Niner used to make only 29-inch wheel bikes. Wait a second, used to make only 29-inch wheel bikes? Yes, the bike I'm sitting on, and hopefully not destroying, doesn't have 29-inch wheels on both ends. It does on one end. Whichever of these two ends is the front, that is a 29-er. The back half, it likes to party a lot. Now, before we open this box, I would like to ask you guys, are you familiar with Niner? Have you ridden a Niner before? If so, which one and what'd you think? I've been on the West Coast my whole life and racing all these Enduros and all that. Niner didn't really have much of an Enduro bike till only a few years ago, so I wouldn't really see Niner bikes at the races. Now, since I've retired, Niner has been pushing harder on the Enduro front. They sponsor my buddies, Kurt Voorhees and Kyle Warner. Both those fellows are really good riders and they're top Enduro racers as well. Let's pop this box open and then we can get onto the trail and pretend to be Kurt and Kyle. Oh, look at this. Nicely done. Yes, this is an e-bike, and yes, this is gonna be hard for me to lift. Oh, holy smokes, this thing looks nice. Man, SRAM brakes, I haven't ridden SRAM in such a long time. That'll be fun. So I'll try this thing mostly stock at first, and then I'll do a few part swap outs, depending on what it needs. A few of the other items in the box, I got owner's manual for the bike and for the motor system. Reflectors, volume reducers for the fork so I can make it a little bit more aggressive if I need to. Oh yeah, and a Bosch charger. I will need to spend a few minutes setting up the seat post. So unfortunately, it's a 125 millimeter drop seat post. I just requested PNW components to send up the Rainier IR, which is internally adjustable down from, I think it's 150 at the shortest, up to 200. I'm five foot eight, this is the size medium. I really hope I can run more than a 125 drop. I've got 190 on my Rocky Mountain, 170 on that Ripmo, 200 on the other Ripmo, and then 200 on my HD5. Oh, and on my Chromag, I'm running a 200. That's important to me. My style is just jump, 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 jump. So I need to get the saddle down and out of the way, especially on a long travel bike. It's built to be airborne.
This is the Niner WFO E9. It's an e-bike, as you, E9, you, you get it. So we're using a 27.5 by 2.8 rear wheel. It's a 29 by 2.5 up front. It's a 180 travel front and rear with a honking coil shock in back. The bike uses the Bosch CX power plant battery. I've never ridden the Bosch system, so I'm pretty excited. It's also fully SRAMed out with SRAM brakes and a SRAM e-bike specific drivetrain. And I haven't ridden SRAM stuff in a long time, so this is a cool opportunity. Without further ado, the dirt here is looking amazing, so let's try this thing on the trail. Dirt is so good today though. To get some miles on this e-bike and on a Norco, which Logan's riding here, Logan and I headed down to some moto legal trails out in the Cascades. Logan has a strong background on the dirt bike side of things, as you all saw in the e-bike versus moto video where he rode my dirt bike. It's not like it's easy. No. People are always like, ah, oh, e-bikes are for lazy. It's like- I've never tried them. Yeah. It's like, I'm still winded. Oh, there we go. Right away, you can tell there's some differences in how these bikes handle the climbs. For me, I found it's a lot easier to do like a high cadence. Yeah, I'm in the lowest gear though. I'll be posting a follow-up video really comparing and contrasting the Shimano system on the Norco with the Bosch system on the Niner. See how far you can make it on that. Oh, on this one? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Nice. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, he's, oh. No. <laughs> oh. <that's>, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Once we got properly into the backcountry, we started to have a lot of fun on both of these e-bikes. Oh, I gotta boost it to get up this one. That was pretty fun. Yeah. Being class one e-bikes, both these bikes have a max speed cutoff of 20 miles an hour. These moto style trails are pretty fast and wide open and pretty often we ended up above 20 miles an hour. This thing's pretty fun once it starts getting fast. Trail or the bike? The bike. It's like kind of confident, inspiring. Confidence inspiring. Sticks to the ground and soaks up stuff pretty well. Traction is really nice. I think Logan got all the buzzwords in there, but let's just enjoy a few more minutes of trail riding on that big old Niner. All right, we are peeking out. This is rad. It's exhausting. Huh. I've never heard that sound before. Maybe for the video we should say it's an elk. Bah, bah. Maybe it is an elk.
Stay tuned for a follow-up video where I go through this Niner and dial it in with a few part swaps. Thanks for joining me, and remember, if you're curious about the Niner WFO E9, hit that link below. Thanks, guys.